What's confounding? It's a factor that is associated with both the exposure and outcome. What happens if that is so? It leads to mistaken estimate of the outcome. The result itself will be having error. So let's take an example here and understand. If a smoking, that's an exposure, it leading to lung cancer. That's the outcome. So we also know that smoke uh, lung cancer is common in the male sex and as the age increases the incidence of lung cancer increases right so if you have a study with more than 60 plus population then that itself is a factor that can lead to cancer okay so these two can itself can cause cancer so thereby we call it as confounding factors okay so let us learn with one more example here, okay, and how to reduce the confounding factors. It's the year 2020, imagine, and you have taken a study with 100 smokers, okay, and you're following it up for the next 15 years, okay, and you see that you have among them in the next 15 years, you have, suppose that there are 80 people affected with lung cancer. And if you, in a comparison group you have 100 non-smokers and you're following them up 15 years again and you see that they are only 10 lung cancers okay so the confounding factor here could be the males who are aged can also lead to this high number so how to reduce that let us see so we do that by matching what does we mean by matching is when we are taking in the results what how many males are there among the among that we are actually considering that the main number of males and, and matching with the males in the comparison group also we don't take females here similarly if, if you want to uh, match the age to reduce the confounding factor that is age you have to take above 60 in this group and above 60 only in this non-smoker group also so after matching since both are common in like both the groups they buy the confounding effect gets reduced so you what you have is exactly that is only the smoking effect whether it is causing cancer or not okay so how do we remove like we saw the most common use and simplest one is by matching that is you match the demographics that age or sex or occupation the same thing in both the groups you take and thereby you reduce the effect of that other methods the best method is stratified randomization this is a question for you okay the second best is only the randomization okay then we have multivariate analysis or statistical modeling so it is also very nice method but very complicated one other is restriction and finally stratification all these six methods are a way to reduce the confounding factors that this happens more common in the case control studies when you're comparing uh, or the cohort sorry cohort studies so what is bias bias is nothing but some problem in this results because of some error so that error or systematic error we call as bias the three types of bias one is subject bias for example you're not able to the patient the participant is not able to recall okay or the memory that in case control we see and other one is author the subject itself changes its habits previously was a non-smoker he may start smoking in the comparison group okay so that habit chain so you can remember like h for Hawthorne and h for habits remember okay so this happens in cohort studies investigatory bias so you have people we, we select the cases we classify them and we interview them right in, during the study so each step can have a bias so selection bias misclassification bias or interview bias interviewer is like the person who's interviewing okay that can be reduced by giving equal time for each like in vivas we have equal time if we put that will reduce that bias and there's one more method where that is double blind is a question for you 
Double blinding is where the investigator doesn't know who the person is in which group case, uh, which is it in the main disease group or the comparison non-disease group. All right. And the third one, uh, also fourth one is Burke-Sonian bias. It's also important, frequently asked question. It's a simple, it's a hospital based bias wherein the, the rates of admission is different in different departments. We'll discuss in detail in the next slide. And we have an analyzer in the study, right? When we have a participant, the subject, we have an interviewer and the analyzer, the statistician. So we have discussed all this too. Now talk about analyzer, wherein the, the, because of the errors in calculation, that we call it as calculation error. It's not seen much now because we are statistician for that. The Burkissonian we are talking in detail now. It is due to one thing different hospital admission rates. So remember hospitals, so because of studies done in hospital, they are prone for this bias, Burkissonian bias. So this all bias happens in case control studies. Okay. Example, if we have a medic, if we are studying in a medical college, if we see in a year 2020, we have, we are doing a study in the oncology department, they're taking the cases and non-oncology department, we're taking the controls for the comparison group. Okay, so if you find if there are just 10 cases admitted there and you are including them, okay, and in the non oncology department, you know that there will be many cases, right? So, medicine department, for example, will have more number of cases. That's so different number of cases in different departments because of that, there's a different number in the case group and the control or the comparison group. So, the error that comes in this particular type of study is. That would be Burkissonian bias and it's a type of investigator. The person who is investigating because of him, this error can occur. All right. And the last ones we know, we have, let me introduce you to Pygmalion and the Golem bias. Okay. These are the two lecturers or professors you can see. So one teacher Pygmalion is motivating the students and that is influencing the result of the students. And whereas Golem is a person just for study purpose, he demotivated the students and saw what is the influence. So the influence of the teacher, when we see that is a bias which happens, that is named as Pygmalion and the Golem. Again, okay? Pygmalion is a motivator, Golem is a demotivator. Just by this, we come to know. And this is a type of selection bias. This is a question for you. It's a type of selection bias. 